So in this video, I'm going to compare myself, an average amateur level track driver and racer, to an actual racing professional. Now, I've been driving um, on tracks for 13, 14 years. I've raced at state level. I've got wins, various other things like that. But you can always learn, and I'm particularly keen to learn off an actual professional. So introduce Josh Bucken. And Josh, tell us about um, your racing career and some of your achievements. Uh, so I started off in karting uh, when I was in my mid-teens, uh, raced that for a number of years and then progressed into Formula Ford, uh, won quite a lot of races in Formula Ford, at, at one point we won 19 of 21 starts in a year, which yep, was yep. pretty cool. I uh, then went to Formula 3, uh, ran second in the Australian series in Formula 3 and then gap year of COVID uh, and then uh, TCR now, so touring car racing out in Australia um, and I've won multiple rounds and races in, in that category over the last two years. And touring cars is basically a modified road car as opposed to a single seater um, category. Correct, yeah. So yeah. basically the, the car that you see here, the shell is taken off the production line yep. in Korea for us. It's taken to Hyundai Motorsport in Germany yep. and it's turned into a bespoke race car from there. So carbon panels, um, you know, big brakes, gearbox, all that yep. sort of yep. stuff. It's a very bespoke, very um, you know, focused car, but it does maintain a lot of factory components and that's why the series appeals is because what you see here is very similar to what you'd actually okay. see visually in the race car. And I believe you have a world ranking. Can you tell us about that? Yep, so recently TCR Global have introduced world rankings for the you know couple of thousand drivers who compete in touring car categories yep. recognized by the FIA across uh, across the world, uh, yep. specifically in TCR. Um, my ranking was 36. There's And as I say, there's thousands of rankings. So I'm looking to get that a bit better. Yep. Uh, but next year, there's a competition where the top 60 world ranked drivers go into the world final. Whoa. and compete for basically the world championship. So yeah. uh, fingers and everything crossed. Okay, and Australia is a tier one nation when it comes to racing and Josh is uh, working racing at national level winning stuff. So I'm really excited to see what I can learn out of this and what I can learn will be what you can learn. So I imagine that if you're watching this, you're just like an average Joe sort of um, track day person like me. So we'll see what we can do. Cool, let's do it. So Hyundai have lent me this i30 sedan N to set a lap time and then Josh will set one too and we'll compete pair. For context, my current track car is this Lotus Elise, which is about as different from the i30N as possible. It's rear drive, mid-engined and very light, so I'm going to need to seriously adjust my style back to front drive. At least I'm familiar with the track at Winton and I have driven N cars before quite a few times. Now my first session was full of traffic, but on the next session there's a bit, left traffic, a bit less traffic, I can get my eye in and I set what I feel is a reasonable lap. While I'm doing that, Josh is driving this, his company car, which is also a sedan N, but with better tires, giving people hot laps. So he's gonna be ready to jump into my sedan N and try and beat my time. So for car setup, I use N mode, but with three changes. First, I turn rev matching off because I like the challenge of heel and toe. Similarly, ESC is off because I like the driving purity. And I set suspension to the medium mode because I feel that works best around Winton, which isn't a completely smooth track. Now Josh swaps his company car sedan N for my sedan N and he's out there in traffic trying to find a gap to set a good lap time. I'm really interested to see what he'll manage. So watching the live timing, there's my name, a 142.6 is what he's done so far. Um, let's see if it will go any quicker. So Josh came back and I've got the video, I've got the data and now I'm going to play the two laps side by side. Then we're going to get into the differences, analysis and then see what I can do to improve.
So there we have it, a 145 for Josh and a 141.7 for me. Now I'm sure we could both got a little bit of extra out of the car, but you know that was a representative lap and that's enough to work with for the time being. Okay, so Josh and I have both done our laps and unsurprisingly there's a difference in speed which means I need to learn something. Now, we have data on the race box which I have downloaded, it comes in a VBO format file. You can look at it on the race box website or you can download it into an application called Circuit Tools which is what I've done and what we've got on the laptop here. So this is a quick introduction to circuit tools. I've got Josh's 140.5 loaded and my own 41.75 and we're going to put that out the way because we don't need it anymore. Take a look at the map of Winton here and under graph I've got it set to time. Now there's a blue cross here representing me and a red cross representing Josh and if I come over here, so we start it there, you can see that the two crosses are pretty much identical. Red cross slightly ahead there over here and Red Cross is slightly getting ahead indicating that Josh is pulling up a little bit of time on me and we can actually zoom in a bit on that as well and keep it centered so just zoom in a little bit more and you can see that Josh is slightly pulling away there just fractionally in front and it's through the sweeper that he really starts to make a lot of time on me. Over here I start to pull it back just a fraction and the gap is more or less centered uh, more or less static for the rest of the lap and pause that a little bit more there and then that's the final um, result that's about 11 car lengths 1.2 seconds so that's with it set to time now we can also set it to position index which is what we're going to use for the analysis because that actually um, will show us exactly what the two cars are doing or the same car two different occasions is doing on the same part of the track at the same time so we can zoom in a bit on that you can see what we mean here so if we come up here those two crosses are going to remain the same but um, now if I just make the track map a little bit smaller we can see that coming up here um, Josh so I'm at 164.73 kilometers an hour Josh is at 166.6 and you can see that at this point the red is a head uh, uh, is a greater value than the blue, so he's slightly ahead of me. But we're breaking um, at exactly the same point here. Breaking is absolutely identical. He then gets on the power just a fraction earlier than me here, but then he has to lift. We'll talk about that a bit later on. We accelerate identically up to this point, and then he breaks just a fraction. Um, later than me and carries a little bit more speed into the corner. Now that brings us on to this chart over here which is the delta. So this red line is, I'm not, well the two laps are identical. As um, the line goes above that means I'm losing time. So you can see that I'm losing time slowly but steadily pretty much all the way through the first part of, of the lap and if we just zoom out to about here you can see that's where the dots are, so the crosses are at the moment. So up until this point here it's pretty much me steadily losing time but from this point onwards I'm not really losing any time to Josh. In fact I'm gaining a little bit through that point here then I lose a bit more then I gain a bit more, lose a bit more and then you can see the line going down here I gain a bit more and then I've got a slight gain all the way to the end leaving me about 1.2 seconds adrift. And now for the analysis with Josh. So now Josh and I are going to have a look at this data and see what the differences are. So I've already had a bit of a look at it, but um, let's see what Josh has, has to say about this data trace. Um, so I spend a good amount of my life looking at squiggly lines like this. So um, from, uh, from a holistic view, just looking straight at it, um, in simple terms, I'm making the straights longer um, and that, that's, that's pretty much what you can see here. So if you look basically um, in some of the key areas, so down here you can see I actually slow the car down more, I slow the car down more, and I slow the car down more in, in the last two corners. And, yeah, yeah. and I guess what that allows me to do is to get the car turned a bit sooner and get to full throttle a bit sooner, therefore lengthening the straight. Um, and by the time you, know, you can see some of the speed traces, they overlap and um, yeah, there's a bit 
bit of time to be to be found in, in certain areas. And the other thing, looking at it not just from a speed point of view, but if you were to race this car and looking at it as a as a race driver's perspective, that's also saving tires, saving tires, yeah. saving yeah. tires, yeah. etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, other than that, the only real difference is probably just a bit of commitment into yeah. the fast stuff. Yeah. I mean, if you look back to what the pattern is from the end of that lap, uh, I'm slower in the middle of the corner yeah but i would suggest that that means i'm at that full throttle just that fraction sooner right and i know with these cars that's very crucial with yeah. a front wheel drive because yeah. you do get that little bit of exit understeer if you're on the gas too soon if you refer to you know the exit of turn one you can see i'm on the gas here i think i'm good i have to have a big reset on the throttle yeah this was a lift on the throttle there slightly that's right yeah, yeah so okay. my my internal computer says i'm good to go yeah so um as i change direction I really make sure it's quite an aggressive change of direction to yep. really yep. load that front left. Yep. Um, but it took me a few goes to get the lap through traffic and by that stage the tyres weren't yeah, probably at yeah, their best. Yeah. So I actually had a bit of understeer and what you see there is that understeer, me resetting on the throttle to just address that. Okay. Um, and yep. so okay. if, if it was earlier in the session that wouldn't have been there. Yeah. Because the run from three to four isn't very long, I'm not overly interested in you know, getting an amazing exit because mm -hmm. if I can carry, you know, that entry speed um, and still get an okay exit, I've carried yeah, that entry yeah. speed. So it's that risk versus reward of, you know, yeah, the exit's okay. not so big, so let's focus more on the entry there. And your minimum speed's a bit better than mine, but again, you're at it for quite a while, whereas I dip at the minimum and, and bounce and, off and, of it. And then come back, yeah, okay. All right, and then up here now, we turn in at you turn in fractionally later than me, yeah, but um, I slow the car down more, way more significantly because that blue line just goes um, at a significant angle compared yep. to yours, so there's a lost time there. We're actually at the same minimum speed there, but you've gained just there and there because um, I've braked harder and sharper, yep. even if it's for the same amount of time, and then we're accelerating here. Now, this is, where, this is where I lose a lot of time, which is through the sweeper. So my technique there is basically take um, an apex, fairly early apex with the um, curb on the left, and then try and go full throttle for the remainder all the way down through to to here. But what you're doing is just basically taking more speed. There's whole chunks of time missing there for me. Yeah, so what I try and achieve there, and actually what you're doing is very similar to what my teammate in TCR does. So okay. it's the old skin the, skin the cat a few ways. So, yeah. um, you know, this example, my way is faster, but you can certainly adapt your way to equal out or, or be, yeah. be similar. Um, my technique here, and it's my driving style, is to try and carry momentum um, a little bit more through the fast stuff. Yep. Um, so I basically get to the right hand side of the road, I'll turn the car in flat, yep. I'll aim yep. for the curb, and I'll basically just, my internal gyro will decide how long I can stay on the gas for. Yep. Um, it's usually just before the curb. Okay. When I do get to the curb, I don't brake straight away. So I try and make it one big corner. I don't yeah. try and make it a turn, a lift, another turn. I try and get to my minimum speed just there yep. uh, without using much brake um, or getting back to the throttle. And that sharp hit of the throttle that, that I'm using is, is in that section there where yep. you're yep. between curbs. Get to this point here and we're both braking at similar points, similar points and um, I've managed to brake a little bit harder than you did, probably due to the tyre grip just fractionally, and I've got fractionally more speed. Yeah, in fact, you do a better job in that section there of, of getting the car. You, you actually made it make a net gain of um, a small amount from okay. apex to lifting off of the next corner, yeah. so that's interesting. Okay. For me, is not actively decelerating or accelerating, yep. then that minimum is where you know, I need to find the time. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not on the gas or on the brake. I know for yeah. a fact I'm trailing the brake a little bit or I'm doing nothing. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. by the time I can get back to the throttle, it's a, it's a positive single push of the throttle. There's no gentle yeah. feed or anything like that. It's one positive hit and that's what you can see everywhere. Yeah. You're changing gear slightly later than I do. Possibly, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, okay. But as you can see, for, from, from basically there until there, you've, again, you've made a gain on me, and I think that's where the gear change possibly is there. So maybe you're rowing the gear a little bit quicker than me, because that's a significant dip after that, and that's yeah. when we're both on full throttle. Whereas the usual train of thought is sometimes, and you're not, you're not doing it to that degree, but the usual train of thought is carry entry minimum and exit speed. Yeah, and yeah. Sometimes you can't do all of those three things um, without you know, maybe a front winger and a rear wing. So in a car such as this, you need to, I, I work backwards. So I'll yeah. make sure, I'll make sure that my exit is as good as it can be. Yep, yep, and yep. then my exit's there and I'll make everything else fit the exit. And it's when the entry doesn't meet my exit expectations is when I'll bring it back or forward. One thing that's funny is that looking at data, you can always, if, if you know who you're looking at, you can always tell yep. whose data you're looking at. Okay. So everyone has their style. Yeah. So I can look at my data at any track and you can pretty much, you can pretty much say who is this uh, and I could probably pick it up that it's me. Yeah. Okay. Likewise, my two teammates this, this year, I could probably pick their data over mine yeah. without knowing what it is and it's interesting to see how everyone has their individual style and, and theory about how to make a car go fast and as we can see that my old Formula Ford team boss always used to say it doesn't matter how fast or slow someone is no one ever does two corners the same so no one's ever going to be exactly the same speed and sometimes you can take a little bit of knowledge from perhaps someone you don't think is very fast at all I had a teammate back in the day who I didn't really think was any good and there was a certain corner at a certain track that I just couldn't go as fast as him and and that's just how it is. So Having looked at that, um, what tips have you got for me as a driver? So the first thing I would suggest is probably uh, start to bring your minimum corner speed in the slow speed corners down a little bit and yeah. focus more on your exits and okay. getting getting better exits. Yeah. Um, so I would, if I was to go out with you, we'd be picking a point on the corner where yeah. we need to be at full throttle by, yeah. using that. So you go out at 50%, get yeah. to full throttle at that point. Yeah. And then as you get comfortable doing that, like I said before, we'll make that entry ma match where we need to be on the power. And, and I think you'd find very quickly that you wouldn't be able to do some of these things um, just purely from a fact that, you know, if you're gently accelerating through the corner there at 10%, then going to 100, it's much more, um, much more beneficial to just have nothing for a little bit longer and then go as quickly to 100% as you can. So I would probably focus on the exit of the corner a little bit and then bring your entry back to where it is. So you probably, for me, if we were to go out, we'd go slower for yeah. probably half a day before making gains. So your ceiling would be a lot higher, but it, we'd come backwards and, and work our way up from there, so. Great, okay, well, um, let's do that. Let's go out and see what we can learn. Cool, let's do it. So a couple of final things. This is the entry to turn 10, and Josh brakes a little bit lighter than me, so you can see that I'm losing time to him because he's just moved that little bit further ahead on the track by braking a couple of metres later. Now, he uses second gear out of this corner, and I use third gear. So my approach is just to roll it through, carry a bit more momentum, where he's is going for his approach of slow the car down more and punch out in second gear so I'm gaining time on him through here but then he's in second gear able to accelerate quicker and that works for him all the way up here until the point he changes gear and then he's pretty much level with me all the way but he's still just gaining time on me all the way up here as you can see and we change gear again he's a little bit later with the gear changes here um, and then coming into turn 11 I brake later than he does and therefore I'm now the one who is gaining time all the way through turn 11 there and as you can see out of that part at the end we'll just run through here he's got a, a greater spurt up there because he's gone into second gear for that for that corner and I haven't quite I, I keep it in third gear through there um, and again my speed through here I just carry the speed a bit further but that's not doing me a lot of good because um, at the exit of turn 12 here we're pretty much co-speed you can see his second gear acceleration is fractionally better for him but then he changes gear at this point and then I'm fractionally ahead and it's pretty much line ball acceleration there so in that particular case I'm not sure second gear really was an advantage. I think it really depend how well you took that particular corner as to second or third gear always being better than one or the other. 
let's go out, drive at that sort of 65, 70%, yeah. so that anything that I have, I can give you and it goes in. It's okay. not, like I know if I'm driving at 10 tenths, if you're yeah. trying to talk to me, I'm yeah. like, I got okay. things to do. So, yeah. so what I do, I aim, as soon as I get to the right side yeah. of the road, I'm starting to turn. Okay. I want to get nice and close to this curb yeah. and then just kind of relax the hands, let the car, yeah, see, I'm wider than that. Yeah. So just pick that up 5%. Yeah, okay. I'd be interested to see where we position the car through yeah. here because I'm quite narrow on the exit of turn one. Yeah. So I keep it quite tight for a long time. I go here and before, then yeah, I try that, and just get onto power. That's exactly right. That's, so that's very similar to what I'm trying to do. And now keep the car a little bit tighter out of here so don't run all the way out to the exit. So you mean like that? Like that. Okay. Come back across. Okay. And now, then do you you're double apex this one? Uh, yeah, it's kind of, kind of. Yeah. And then turn in now. So I'm turning in much sooner. Okay. And I am kind of double apexing that. And that's a distance thing. I'm not worried about the speeds. Okay. I'm worried about how much distance I'm covering. Yeah, yeah. Just trying to open the steering out. Yeah. I may have even carried the brake for just a little bit longer into turn one there. Same there. I, I, I know I'm carrying that brake just that fraction longer. And it's not to slow the car down, it's just to compress the shock to give it more. So in the slow speed stuff, yeah. you've got to decide between corner speed, distance used, um, and, and decide what algorithm works the best. But yeah, bring your brakes back 10 meters each of these. Okay. So, now. Good. Keep it tight, keep it tight, keep it tight. Gas. Yeah, good. That 2% throttle that you wanted to put on, yeah. that just instantly created understeer. Yeah, so yeah. adjustment I would make, everything's yeah. good at this point. I would probably attack from here though. Okay, all right. And that means the car's straighter for longer, you're gonna have more okay. grip. 10, they will tow Get as close here. to the curb as you can. Yeah, good. And, and then just straightening out the steering. 60 here. Brakes. Start to turn, peel off the brake. Back to the gas. Yeah, that's yep. good. I could actually feel the entire car slightly sliding there. Yeah, it was, yep. So which indicates that both both front and rear axles are doing the good work they need to do. Your entries and exits perhaps are a bit wider in some spots. Yeah. That's why you had that minimum speed for longer because you are traveling longer. Yeah. Whereas I was traveling a little bit less of a distance. So if you got our total circuit meters completed for a lap, yeah. let's say it's 2000 meters, mine might be yeah. 1998, yours might be 2005. Yeah. So um, I was always taught in my karting days that you know the less distance you travel, particularly on those seven, eight hundred meter kart tracks, yeah, yeah. you can take two meters off the track. You do twenty lap final. Yeah, that's quite a quite a bit of distance. And sometimes there's no speed that you can carry to make up for that over a, over an event. So. Yeah. So with the benefit of the Dido analysis and Josh's in car coaching, I take to the track again to see if I can find any more time. Here's my new fastest lap against Josh's benchmark.
So now I'm only two tenths of a second off, which is due to a combination of data analysis, Josh's coaching, but also the fact that I'm dialed more into the car and I've learnt it. And I actually set that 140.7 time twice in two different sessions towards the end of the day, even though the track was hotter and the conditions weren't as good as earlier in the morning. So here's the analysis of that lap. You can see at this point, I'm actually faster than Josh up into turn one, and I break pretty much at the same point, maybe a fraction later, so I've got the advantage down in this point. Um, he, we both bottom out at the same sort of speed here. There's his lift, so he's actually ahead at that point, but then he has to lift, he's equal with me, and we're precisely equal up um, until this point here. Then we start to brake, I brake a little bit harder, carry a bit of extra speed, so pretty much line ball at this point, and then we get into turn four, um, and he's got more confidence there, so he brakes a little bit later, carries more speed, and you can see that um, is a gain there. At this point, it's pretty much nothing in it, but then coming up into the sweeper, and that's where, you know, he's just got more confidence with me just to chuck that car into it and control it. I'm doing a better job than I did before, but it's still not quite as good as him. Again, braking at the same point here, I brake a bit harder than he does. We're bottoming out at the same point, so I paid attention to what he was telling me there. He does a better job through here, gains a little bit of time, so a little bit more time there. And then over here, um, I'm now changing a little bit later because I've learned from that as well. You can see that actually makes a bit of a difference. So I'm gaining time on him all the way up to this point. We break exactly at the same point here. I'm gonna use second gear out of it now, um, and we change gear at the same point, so pretty much line ball there. Again, coming into this corner, I do a pretty good job, and that gains me a bunch more time back, particularly around this part of it because I'm in third gear. Um, not his second gear here, but because he's in second gear, he gets the extra spurt there, which, which which I don't. And coming out of here, he's in second gear, and we're the same, but then he changes gear into third, and then I'm ahead all the way through. So I hope you found that video useful. If you've got any questions, please drop them in the comments, and thanks for watching.